Good evening, it's Dr. Golligly. Today we're going to go over facet cyst findings on MRI scans and how they cause symptoms of sciatica and what they can be done, what can be done to treat them. We'll start over here on the sagittal image where you can see my MR where my see my mouse moving. This is a 45-year-old woman, and I've started here by labeling the spine. So this is the S1 vertebral body, that's the first bone in the sacrum. Then above that are the five bones in the lumbar spine. L5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is the sagittal image, so if I click on this image and move back and forth with my arrow keys on the mouse, I go from the left side to the right side of the spine, and you can see the reference lines moving on the image on the right. I'll grab my arrow here and point out a couple of findings. So this is an intervertebral disc here. The center of the disc is made of a soft protein gel called the nucleus. There's a region in the front of the disc and in the back of the disc that's made of a tough ligament called the annulus. Behind the bones and the disc is the spinal canal. The spinal canal is filled with cerebrospinal fluid, and inside the spinal canal is the spinal cord. And then stopping here at about the L1, L2 level, the spinal cord actually changes into nerve roots, and those nerve roots go down into the legs. So over here is the axial image. By convention on the axial image, this is the front of the spine here, the right side of the spine over here, and the left side of the spine over here. I've drawn colored lines around the bones of the posterior elements of the spine. So this is one half of a facet joint on the right side, one half of a facet joint on the left side, and then here the lamina makes up the other half of the facet joint. So in between these bones, in this space right here, there is a cartilage surface and joint fluid just like one of the knuckles in your fingers. Here is the neuroforamen, which is where the nerve root sneaks out to go down into the legs. And then this is the spinal canal proper right here, this triangular shape. So facet cysts will often develop medial to the facet, and if that occurs, it traps the nerve root as it tries to exit through the neuroforamen, causing pain in the patient's legs. So this is a normal looking level here. Here we see very little facet arthritis and the neuroforamen are wide open. If we scroll down here to the L45 level, here is the facet on the patient's right side, and it's filled with more fluid than the facet over here on the left side. And what I like about this image and the reason why I've selected it for this MRI series is because you can actually see the connection between the fluid in the facet itself and then the facet cyst that's developing here inside the spinal canal. So we can zoom in on that, and we can see how that connection is occurring and joint fluid is escaping from the arthritic facet joint here because it's under a significant amount of pressure and it's dilating the capsule of the facet joint and it's walled off from the spinal canal by this thin black line which represents the joint capsule but it's trapping the nerve root as it tries to leave the spine and go down into the legs here. You can see how this path of this neural frame is much more narrow and tortuous than it is over on this side. And In my clinical experience also these facet cysts tend to be sticky. So when we remove them off the nerve root, they're relatively densely adhered. So I think one of the reasons why they cause such severe sciatica is that every time the patient bends forward to touch their toes or to do their stretching exercises or their yoga, the excursion of the nerve root is limited by the fact that it's stuck down by this facet cyst. So I'm just going to hit pause for a minute. I'm going to go to an MRI scan to look at a different facet cyst. So now we're here with a patient that's about 20 years older. And again, I've labeled the vertebral bodies in the spine. L, uh, S1, L5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here the significant finding that's causing this patient buttock and hip pain is this mass occupying lesion inside the spinal canal right in this region right here. So I'm going to scroll back and forth on the MRI scan so you can appreciate that irregular mass of material here. In fact, we can even zoom in on it so you can see it even better here. And that's a um, lesion that's obstructing the spinal canal and creating a significant amount of spinal stenosis. Now we can get a sense on this sagittal image here that it's coming from the back of the spine as opposed to the front, front of the spine, so it doesn't appear to be a large disc herniation. And if we click over here and scroll down to that level, this is what we see here. We start to see that the just like the previous picture, the facet here is this line right here. And there's a connection between that line and then the facet cyst, which is developing just like this inside the spinal canal. So here you can see there's a little bit of fluid at the next level down with, um, sorry, the next sequence down, which is um, a little bit of fluid inside the facet joint, and some of that fluid has escaped, and it's creating this loculated, which means chambered, loculated facet cyst here occupying the spinal canal. So the way that we treat this is to treat it almost as if it was a disc herniation. We perform a microscopic outpatient decompression. We make a small 
surgical approach with an incision in the skin less than about an inch here. We create a tiny little keyhole opening through this bone and then using some special neurosurgical tools and the operating microscope, we're able to remove this facet cyst and the bone spur that's associated with it. So the amount of material that we remove here is this amount of material right through here and then the bone spur that's developing off of the inside of the facet joint. So that when we take all that material out there, That'll give a lot more space for the nerve root as it's trying to sneak out through the spine through this neuroforamen. So those are two pretty good illustrations of facet cysts and why they cause symptoms of sciatica and in this case also central spinal stenosis. And so if you come to my clinic and we need to go over the plan for how to treat a facet cyst, now you'll be um, properly educated. Thanks a lot and have a great night.